Hi guys, so if I get bored of reading Hacker News or Reddit, I like to read, to read my my RSS feed. And I told you before, I use Noise Boiter, which is called Newsboat nowadays. But this only works on my Arch Linux machine. I, You know, when I'm out and about, I like to use my iPhone and I like to use Safari, the open platform implementation of the, well, the proprietary implementation of the open platform, which is the web. So how do I get this onto a web page? Hmm, not easy. So I did lament that I need something for my phone. And um, how I go about it, as I usually do, I, I, I use GitHub search. And I was looking for an RSS feed reader in Go. This Miniflux one looked potentially good, but then it requires Postgres and calls itself lightweight and the rest of it. Oof. Um, but then I found this one called uh, Pico Feed by Cena Burns, and it seems to work quite well. Let me just quickly demonstrate. So I like it with Newsboat. It just has this like one file called URLs, and Pico Feed can work with that. It goes off and fetches it all in parallel and concurrently as Golang can do. So, so well and it comes up with this. So yeah, I want this file on my homepage. How do I do that? I think I will create a serverless function that runs daily to do that. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now and come along for the ride. Okay, firstly, I'm gonna use Apex to deploy the Lambda function and I can get it, I, I was wondering how you get it to run daily. I think there's a way of doing it. Or I can just if, do it in CloudWatch events and what else? Let's fork this thing. Let's get, let's get fork this to my thing. Let's clone this out. Okay, so I copied my newsboat urls to feeds.txt and then I made a few changes where I make it output HTML by default and then I remove that flag pasta because I don't need that because feed.tech is going to go into the serverless function so yo it's all going in there yes 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 now I need to write this file out to S3 come on So you all know my lovely homepage. Actually, this gets updated once a day by a Travis thing. Um, I think I'm just gonna copy it in there somewhere, maybe into feeds.index.html. So yeah, this website is CloudFront um, with a bucket in the back, so. I'm just trying to remember how to get standard out into this body. Yeah. I was suffering earlier with trying to connect the output with the S3 upload, but I um, figured it out and the file's here and it uh, looks like that. So now I just need to, well, let me just show you how I did it using byte buffer. So thanks, go nuts. Now to turn this into a Lambda function. I've run out of time for tonight. I, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. I'm almost done. I just have to adjust the time out and finish off the permissions. Good night. Morning guys, so now if when I'm out and about, I can just go to my homepage and go click on this RSS thing. Focus. And now I can read all my feeds here. So problem solved. So I hope that showed you how I go about generating a static page using, using Lambda and Go and how easy it is and hopefully that will inspire you to to do something, you know. 
uh, you know, the joy of doing static file creation with Go, I think, is the templating engine is great and it's fast and it's easier to get working in a Lambda environment. Nonetheless, I mean, as I've admitted, I'm always learning Go and the thing that I that wasted like a, a bit of time last night was the fact that I couldn't work out how to get like a output into um, into a variable and then pass it into what the S3 uploader SDK needed. Um, I always find these these sort of things a bit tricky with the, with Go language, which is a strongly typed language. Like you know, render HTML needs um, an I/O writer. Like, how do I know that a file implements an I/O I/O writer? Um, you know, I, I wish this editor was clever enough to suggest that I needed a file. And more importantly, actually, I didn't want to write out a file in Lambda. I wanted to keep it in, in memory. It, it took me ages to come out with these this, this line and the fact that I needed a flush. And then this was really tricky too. So I wish my editing environment could do that. Um, in fact, the editing environment Vimgo doesn't wasn't even giving me the, the the types that I needed to figure out things when I was when I was using Go Info, that, that Go Info basically gives this thing at the bottom that tells me the type. Um, like for example, I opened up a bug yesterday, complaining, and uh, the short story is to use Guru mode and Vim Go instead. But even though VS, VS Code is doing it anyway, so you get my point here that the Go is strongly typed, but the editors, the tooling doesn't seem perfect in my opinion. It could be better. If I'm missing a trick please let me know. Otherwise, yeah, I hope you learned something there. Like the video, subscribe for more, all that jazz, and um, thanks for watching. See ya.